Hello and welcome to Cosmic Cultivators Gardening Edition. And look, we're outside. It's so nice out here. We are doing the whole earthing thing, which is barefoot. Look into that. Scientifically proven to help your soul. Anyway. Also, reduce stress, anxiety, blood pressure. Why are we here today? We have some overgrown tomatoes that we're going to go ahead and pull the trigger. The weather seems like it's going to be 50 as a low for here on out. And we believe it should be good. They've been in the greenhouse for two weeks now? About two weeks, yeah. Two weeks, it's been getting down to the 45s and you'll see in a moment, everything looks good, right? Eh, some are looking a little. But well, I think that's the heat of the greenhouse right now, so. Yeah, yeah. Even um, more of a reason to get them in the ground. We're gonna go ahead and show you how we plot this out and show you what we're gonna do with our tomato plants. I know it's very hard to see, but if you look closely, we have this all plotted out with a tool that I had bought for Gina, and we referred to a few other gardeners. And where it is, what it is, it's um, called the uh, square foot, what? I forget what the square foot gardening tool. I forget what they call it. But anyway, what it does is it measures out every square foot and what you can plant for seeds inside that square foot. Today, we're doing tomatoes. That being said, it's one tomato per square foot. Our big beds hold 21 tomato plants. We are also planning on planting some basil and what else in the front? Zinnias. Zinnias in the front as a deterrent for pest. Um, oh, I should go to this side for, first. Then we're gonna be planting our Chinese noodle beans here and hopefully they will grow up this trellis and meet with a lot more Chinese noodle beans but what we're going to do today is show you how we are going to separate tomato plants and also teaching you that you can bury these things all the way up to here if you really wanted to so if you have been watching me and Chris for a while you will know that I am not the best person at labeling things no um, so therefore, we're not too horribly concerned with naming these. We know the varieties that we're growing, and obviously when they start to fruit, we'll be able to tell what they are. So it's surprise gardening. Yeah, I think it's fun that way. But this is a mortgage lifter. Um, it says it's a pink thing. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a mortgage lifter. Um, so go ahead. Tomatoes all pretty much require the same hair so not too overly concerned with the labels but yeah we're gonna call this mortgage lifter I guess you're not gonna bury that anymore no this one's does not have a very big stock to begin with and he's growing really weird I don't know what's going on his leaves are starting to turn purple he could have just been getting unhappy in there all right now we'll go on to the next one and um, explain to people why it's okay to plant these as deep as you want and then I'll jump in and start helping. Um, so do you see all those tiny hairs on a tomato plant? They are starts to roots. Anywhere that those hairs touch in the dirt will turn into roots. Sometimes it doesn't even need to be touching the dirt and it will start growing roots. Yep. So the deeper you plant it, the better your root system will be. So the best thing to do is to take off the two bottom leaves and just plant it down in there nice and deep. Some people even plant them sideways and they'll root all the way 
and grow across the ground. Boom. So All that right. was champagne bubbles. All right. So what I'm going to do is get you guys set up. I'm going to kick this in the cosmic warp speed. Oh, before I forget, too, I just want to thank everybody that was so generous to us this year with all of these amazing seeds. Yes. I love sharing with the community and they are more than generous. So thank you all. So we've come to one of those plants where you got two for the price of one. This has happened to us at the store this year too. If you find a plant that has two shoots in the same container, you literally have two plants for the price of one. So what you want to do is gently, gently try to separate these by breaking up that pile you can also use water which we've shown in previous videos yeah this one's a little bit tricky but if you're patient enough with it and you don't rip and tear at it too much and you just kind of slowly work it get all of the dirt out of there which is why it's a good idea to um, use water there we go just like that two for the price of one so this is not all of our tomato plants these are the largest ones that we have giving the other guys a little more time in the greenhouse just to bulk up a little just in case that and also if we end up losing these because of the cold we at least have some backups i really don't think that's going to be the issue though i think we're going to be more than all set oh yeah it's going to be pretty much in the 80s so instead of doing the 21 tomato guess our um, plot that we had we're going to kind of stagger these a little bit so it won't be that difficult so i do want to mention trying some, to harvest i do want to mention some of the varieties that we are planting even though they don't have tags it's still important to know what you're growing um, so we have everything from mortgage lifters to pink fang to isis candy, champagne bubbles, orange currants, yellow gooseberries. Um, I still have a few varieties to plant just so we have the entire color of the rainbow. Um, there's blueberry. But yeah, we'll definitely see them together as the season goes. And there it is. Most of our large tomato plants are planted in the massive Mater Mansion. We have room for two more tenants when they are ready. Uh, I think the next step that we're going to do is possibly do some Chinese oh, noodle beans. First so, we're going to do um, a furrow. We're going to do a furrow. And add our 10-10-10 fertilizer to the furrow. So what we that means, some... what that means is we're going to Go ahead and draw ourselves a line, just like so. Gina's going to pour some wonderful fertilizer. Organic 10-10-10. And then I'm going to gonna go behind her, and I'm going to cover it all up like so. And when we go to water. I do give them an organic um, instant feed fertilizer about once every two weeks. So we're gonna go ahead and do that to the other side. Next part in this is uh, insect protection. 
what we are planting is these giant cactus mixed color zinnias along with two other varieties along with two other varieties i don't know if you can see the holes right here but gina is marking out our game plan with that uh, one foot square and we're going to go ahead and drop one seed per hole today which is four to five inches apart which is yellow on your square gardening tool This thing really does come in handy, and I wish I started using it sooner. Had it for a while. Nice. All right, so while he's doing the giant, I'm going to come through in the middle hole. I'm going to put my basil, which happens to be mammoth basil. And then I'm going to add my dwarf zinnias to the front. And this really is the definition of square foot gardening. You're fitting as much stuff that is compatible in a bed together. Next thing we are planting are the Chinese red noodle beans. We like to live life on the wild side. It says six inches apart. We're gonna go ahead and do four inches apart because that's just how we roll now I'm planting these noodle beans what you want to do is get your bean to be an inch under the surface and like we said six inches apart but we're adventurous and we're gonna go ahead and do four inches apart as always you want to lightly cover over all of your beans, like so. Well, those ones are supposed to be about an inch, I think, there. Yeah, an inch deep. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I said. And six inches apart. Well, like I said, we like to live life on the wild side here. Quick update at the end of the day. We were sitting here, you saw us plant our tomatoes, you saw us do some beans along here. And then I was like, I have so much wasted space on the ends here. Look what we decided to do, everybody. We made two six foot tall trellises on this end and we ended up planting a whole bunch of beans along there. Whole bunch of beans here, here, so on and so forth. So we just added 12 feet of, no, actually probably a lot more than that, 24 feet of trellis growing space. You see wifey right here watering it all in. What did we plant, dear? Um, there's some French horticulture beans, there's scarlet runner beans, and the tried and true Kentucky wonder pool bean. So. Which is an old, old so there you have it everybody we are starting to fill up our beds we are starting to plant stuff we're getting this year rocking and rolling the tomatoes are definitely looking a lot more perky than they did when they went in there yes they look happy we still have two more spots in this bed and then like we said another i don't know about 20 more spots over there we still got to figure out what goes on in the island but for now, we're gonna wrap up this day. We're already late for work. And um, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned something about tomatoes. <laughs> Try not to get them wet like I'm doing right now. Yeah. Anyway, have a wonderful day. Peace, love, and happiness. Peace.